Subscribe to Motoroids for the most in-depth and detailed car and bike reviews. Hit that bell icon and you will be notified before everyone else. Hey guys, welcome to Motoroids.com. My name is Amit Changani and from today we are starting a new series called Tech Talk with Motoroids. And in this series we are going to talk about a lot of things which are technical in nature and this would be a little more educational in nature and we'll essentially try to answer a lot of questions that you have been asking us about generic things and we are hopeful that this series will go a long way in making you understand your cars and motorcycles a little bit better. In this inaugural issue of Tech Talks with Motoroids, we are going to talk about slipper clutch, a bit more advanced version of slipper clutches which is known as assist clutch or slip and grip clutch as well as why exactly is slipper clutch required, what is the use of it and how exactly does it benefit you as a rider. So let's start off uh, by understanding what is the need of a slipper clutch in modern motorcycles. So while you're riding very hard, for example on a racetrack and you are already in a relatively high range of your engine's RPM and you downshift aggressively or maybe uh, drop two gears, what happens is that the wheel speed is still much higher than what the engine can withstand and if you shift a little too aggressively when the speed is still too high, the wheel speed would try to shoot the RPM of your engine up and in case it's not able to overcome the back pressure or the engine braking of your motorcycle what will happen is that the rear wheel will lock up there would be a rear wheel hop chatter and your bike may get uh, destabilized you may even take a fall you may crash so to overcome that situation the concept of slipper clutch was developed and to understand how exactly a slipper clutch works we first need to understand how a basic clutch system works on a motorcycle so here is the basic clutch system of a motorcycle explained in the most basic manner through a diagram so the whole assembly comprises of two main components uh, there is the inner hub which is connected to uh, the flywheel and it gets the drive and the other side comprises of a pressure plate which puts pressure on the clutch plate assembly and makes the whole unit move as one so the drive moves the inner hub and then there is the pressure plate and when the pressure is applied there are a lot of frictional plates inside the clutch plate assembly and when the pressure is applied the whole assembly moves like one and then the drive is sent to the gearbox now when you engage the clutch lever what happens is that the springs are stretched and the pressure plate is distanced from inner hub and in this manner the clutch plates are distanced and the inner hub is allowed to move freely without moving the drive that goes to the gearbox and this is required when you don't want the drive to be transferred to the wheel. Now as you can see here, uh, if you really look at it, the basic assembly of such a system is like these square notches. So when the inner hub moves, these notches ensure when the clutch lever is disengaged that the drive is sent to the gearbox. Now as you can imagine, in case the wheel speed is higher than what the engine speed should be at that point in time which generally happens when you shift down a gear or two too many the wheel speed would try to move the pressure plate in a manner such that it moves the inner hub higher at a speed higher than its desired to and that would shoot up your uh, engine's rpm and sometimes when the momentum of the wheel or the speed of the wheel will not be able to overcome the back pressure or the engine braking what will happen is that uh, the rear wheel will get locked up and uh, in that case the bike may get destabilized. Now to overcome that we have the concept of slipper clutch. So unlike these square notches that you have here, what you have here is these ramps. As you can see there is a slight slant to it. So imagine a situation where the pressure plate is trying to move faster than the inner hub. And since you have these ramps here what will happen is if you downshift too aggressively the additional wheel speed will not translate into the pressure plate making the inner hub move faster with it what will happen is it will just slip over it and keep slipping over it until it comes to an equilibrium and that's how the wheel locking can be prevented so with a slipper clutch you will not require to rev match or match the speed of the wheels to the engine speed and that's something that you can forget about there is a case against this uh, especially by old school riders who think that Rev matching is a very uh, useful concept and it, that's a skill that all the riders should practice. However, we'll talk about rev matching or blipping the throttle in uh, another video. For now, what you need to understand is that with a slipper clutch, the pressure plate will ride over the inner hub in case the wheel speed is higher than what the ideal engine speed should be at that point in time. 
Now, an evolution of the slipper clutch is the assist clutch. And as you can see, the difference here is that the ramps are not just on one side. There is a ramp on the inner side as well. As you can see, the pressure plate as well as the inner hub both have ramps and on both the sides. Now, how does it help? You see, the pressure plate keeps the whole clutch assembly in place. And for that, you require a lot of springs to put all that pressure in. Now, to overcome the pressure of those springs, when you apply pressure on the clutch lever, that's how the pressure plate is removed and that's how the clutch lever disengages the clutch and that's how uh, the drive is disengaged. Now, that requires a lot of force. So, if the pressure plate is heavy, if the springs are uh, powerful, you need to put a lot of force on your left hand and sometimes it can be very, very discomforting. Now, what happens in the case of an assist clutch is as you can see, these notches are on the inside as well. So when the inner hub is moving, that is when you are accelerating and the inner hub is trying to move the pressure plate. So it's designed in such a manner that when it moves, it pulls the pressure plate inside thanks to these notches. And when you accelerate, it gets pulled inside by itself. Now, since the acceleration of the motorcycle automatically leads to application of pressure on the pressure plate, what happens is that you require a lesser number of strings or probably less powerful springs to keep it in place. So whenever you accelerate, it gets pulled in and that reduces the number of springs or the power of the springs that is required. And in that sense, the amount of force that you need to apply on your clutch lever is also reduced. So you can disengage or engage the clutch very easily without having to apply too much force on the clutch lever. So in that sense, it becomes a bit more comfortable for the rider if he's going to ride for long hours within the city and he's going to use the clutch a lot. If it's lighter, it really helps and that's why it's called the assist clutch. So that's how slipper clutch and slipper grip or assist clutch works. And uh, we hope that this video was useful to you in the sense that it helped you understand what exactly is a slipper clutch and slipper grip or assist clutch and the questions that you had in your mind got answered to an extent and if you like the video do hit the like button subscribe to our channel and do share this video with your friends who might be interested in understanding better how exactly slipper clutch works and uh, the workings of it we'll be coming up uh, with more such videos very soon and uh, we would want you to let us know the kind of videos that you want us to make uh, about various different topics similar to this one so that we can create this content and help you understand a few concepts that you probably don't understand better so until next time then, this is Amit Changani signing off. And before signing off, as I always say, rev hard, rev free and ride safe.